touch the chat for me and let me know if people have questions because I don't always see it. Thanks. You bet. No problem. Okay. We will get started. So my name is Denise Burton with Nevada Department of Education. I have some of my partners here that help me with QPR. So I will let them um, introduce themselves. Jen? My name is Jen Fisk. I'm helping Denise with QPR. As she said, um, I have grant monitoring and MOA this year also, along with the health science and public safety programs. Chrissy? Hi, everybody. I'm Christina Carey, and I manage the state grant funding, and I, uh, except I look at all of the academic credit applications, and I oversee the agriculture programs, business, marketing, and finance programs. And Huda. Hi, everyone. My name is, <clears throat> sorry, Huda Hassan. I'm overseeing CT assessments, uh, career guidance, and work-based learning. And I'm also assisting with QPR. So these are my teammates, and you will likely see any or all of them on interviews at least this year. And then Jen, Huda, and I are in the south in Las Vegas area, so we'll be doing site visits down here. And Chrissy helps us up in the north. So um, I thank them all for being here. Donovan, did you have a question? No, I'm just figuring out the interface on this. Thank you okay. very much. <laughs> All right. Thank you. OK, so we'll get started. I did just like I said, I will send these um, out to you, but our uh, emails are in here. You can also find them on our website. So um, those are there and they'll be in the PDF that you get. Uh, we'll be going over these items. We should have plenty of time for questions at the end. But you can put questions in the chat. Christy will interrupt me and let me know what's up there. And um, you can, you know, put your hand up and we'll, if you want to ask a question while we're going through, that's fine. So the items we're going to talk about are just kind of the dates to know. The We'll go through the process because I know most of you here haven't been, either haven't been through it or haven't been through it in a while. Um, we'll talk about evidence collection, best practices, special evidence guidance on our specific evidence guidance on a couple of little ones. Some of the le lessons we've learned through this process, this is our sixth year, and then the how you'll submit it, and then just a couple little reminders at the end. So um, that's what we'll be talking about. And we'll start right now with the dates. So um, June 30th each year is when we we ask for our annual reports to be submitted. So sometime before June 30th, all the teachers for the pro or all the programs should be doing their self assessments, submitting them to your admin. Your admin should be putting together a annual report, which goes to your district and ultimately gets to us by June 30th. Those self assessments can be that's like the first step of QPR, especially if if you're being um, interviewed because you can use those self assessments to build uh, your evidence. Um, and I always I forget this. I usually don't forget this, but just remember that QPR is not a punitive process. It is data collection. It is technical assistance um, guidance, but it is not punitive. It does not count against anyone, teacher, school, district for anything. It's just how we can. I know what's going on in the programs, how we can help um, improve them. Um, we use it to, like when we looked at the data from the last five years, we found things to change in the standards. We found things to put together some, um, some technical assistance, some of the places where our sessions come from, from NACTI and things like that. So, so that's what it's used for. Um, it is also the why for it is also the uh, what's in Perkins funding for accountability. That's how we measure some of the accountability for our funding. So um, it started there, but when we do it, we look at it as really, you know, how we can help our teachers to improve um, improve our programs for our students, and that's that's really why we do it. So. I just want to make sure everybody knew that, and I hope if you are here for your school, 
please pass that along to your school. We do not, we know that this takes time. I'm not going to say it's not time consuming because it is on both of our parts. So um, it's the time consuming to put together. It's time consuming to review it, but it's important work. And um, we do try to make it as easy as possible as far as we've done a lot of changes. If you did this process the first couple of years, you're, you're going to see that's completely different than it was back then. Okay. All right, so move on. So how does it work? We start with that annual self-assessment and the annual reports. Um, for schools that are selected, uh, you want to use those self-assessments that you put together in June. Now, you might notice if you pull up the self-assessment right now, it may be a little bit different than the ones that were out for the annual reports. That's okay. You can still use the other ones. You can use the one that's there now. We're going to take both because the only thing that changed is there was some difference in the way they wanted us to state some of the standards. And so we revised those, but the content is the same. The rubrics are the same. So uh, it doesn't matter which one you turn in. Um, we will take them both. I don't want people to redo something just because there's a new piece of paper. If you already have it and you want to use that one, please do. Um, you'll want to use it. You can uh, you can take that self-assessment, collect one piece of evidence for each one of the indicators, and then using that form, that fillable PDF, you want to add a shareable link for each piece of evidence in the box. The link can be text, does not have to be a live link, because as um, Dana and I were talking about before we started, I haven't even figured out how to do that, but she did post a video on how to do that. Please, if you want to do that, you can. If you want to just copy the text in, I am perfectly capable of copying that text into a browser, and that works for me. So <laughs> I don't want to add extra work for you. Um, prior to October 15th, which is the deadline for the evidence, you will send either via email or you can share a folder with us. Um, I'll give you the email later, but you want to include all the self-assessments with their evidence links. That includes administrator, counselor, and one, one for each of the program areas. So just remember, this is a review of programs of study. This is not um, related to specific teachers. So make sure that you um, well, you know, make sure that you look at it that way. So one self-assessment per program. Okay. There we go. So the first part of the process, which you guys have probably already seen the emails I've been sending out, um, we will do a pre-call about two weeks or so before the um, interviews. And that is to go over our initial or initial evidence review. So we might talk about items that were missing. If there's some overall, like all of the all of the evidence submitted, there was something that didn't quite work and it was the same in each one. We'll talk about that. Um, things like that. It's not a real um, it's not a detailed in-depth review of the evidence. It's basically an overview. But we will do that with the school administration and the district representatives. So that the schools can decide who they want at that meeting. And then the district usually has somebody there. We'll provide you with a tentative agenda for the school so you can adjust it as needed. I know there's a lot of issues with getting subs. We don't pay for subs, but if you um, talk to your districts, I know Clark usually does. I don't know if that's changed, Kim. Um, Washoe does. So I, if you know, talk to them, but we do make it so that you can adjust your uh, that schedule, that tentative uh, interview schedule or agenda to to like put it into teacher preps or whatever. So you can take full advantage of that to make revisions so that you can try to make it as um, inobtrusive as possible. Um, We'll also schedule the actual site visit times at that point. I've given you guys days, but we'll get more specific on the times and then we'll just answer any questions on the actual process, interview process and the site visits. So that's what happens at the pre-call. There you go. Subs will pay for the teachers. They're doing the interviews. Thank you. Or Clark will pay for subs. Um, 
So the interview process, it's it's virtual. I think as any, I don't think anybody's here. There's only one school that only has two programs that we're going to do in person because it's kind of a long drive. So um, most schools, all the rest, we're doing virtual interviews, and we only need one teacher per program area. So you guys can decide who that teacher is uh, based on who has the most knowledge usually. But we we just interview one, um, and then the acceptance of additional interview evidence. Can be done. I said that wrong. The acceptance of additional evidence during interviews can be done if we record if we need to, if we're recording it. Um, that makes it uh, they can show us something on the screen and that makes it evidence that we can take. So we will do that. Um, we already talked about the cost of the subs. You also have two weeks after the site visit or the interview, whichever was last, to update any additional information as far as evidence goes. So it's not a one and done. Um, the site visit is in person. We will visit each program area and then we usually we want to see the career center if you have one. Um, this year, something new is we're adding a student voice section um, as part of the student feedback. So we'll pull a couple of students from each program area. We're going to have a predetermined list of questions that relate to the program study and their CTE experiences and just ask them a couple of questions. It'll take about five minutes out of the class. Um, we will just pull students. They won't be picked by you guys. Um, so trust that we'll, we'll, we've been teachers. We know what ones to pick. <laughs> we will not try, we, this is not gotcha. It's not trying to um, get anybody. We're just gonna just kind of pick a couple. Um, and then remember the site visit is primarily about the safety and facility. So we're looking for things like, are the evacuation plans set up? Are the um, uh, non-discrimination notices up? Are the eyewash stations, have they been, have they been checked regularly? Uh, things like that. We'll also look for the stickers on the equipment for inventory. Um, we'll look at see if that's being kept up. So those are the kind of things we're looking for in the site visit. It's not about we're not watching teachers teach. We're getting that evidence from what you provide us. We're really looking for what the facilities are. Okay, does somebody have a question in the chat? Are we good? Okay. Um, so then after the interview and site visit, like I said, you'll have two weeks to update any evidence. And then um, once we get the last evidence, we'll take about 45 days to complete our summary reports which includes a score sheet for each program. And then we'll send that back. Um, once you get that, you have to do two things. One is the CIP, that's the continuous improvement plan. For any programs, for any items within a program study that got needs improvement, okay? You would have to fill out, it's a one page spreadsheet and you just put the, the indicator number, um, and you you explain or give one sentence, okay? All I need is one sentence. I don't, I, honestly, we don't want to read books, okay? So <laughs> one sentence with a verb, a subject, and a time frame. So for example, last year CTSOs were a thing like they hadn't quite come back from the pandemic yet. And so if they weren't doing a CTSO, that would have been a needs improvement. So they would put something like, um, we, we are investigating uh, starting the CTSO back up for next year, next school year. Subject, verb, and time frame. That's it. I'm not going to respond to your, your um, statements with, you know, why don't you do this or why didn't you do that? We would have given you guidance or any technical assistance during the interviews. You just say what you're going to do and we will accept it. As long as all of the needs improvements are responded to, we will accept that. The CAP is the corrective action plans. Those are things like if there's a construction lab that doesn't have a eyewash station, like they should have that for safety purposes. Then we would write that as a um, corrective action item in the report. And that is the school provides one of those for all the schools. So you don't have to do those per program area, okay? So that would be the same thing you would respond with, you know, what you're gonna do and the time frame. So if it's a case of um, we are submitting this to the district and we may not hear for till next year, that's fine. Just tell us what, what it is, okay? 
Um, and then we ask you to send those back within 30 days of you receiving the summary report. Um, once we get those back, and if all of the needs improvement items are responded to, the final step is just we send out a letter of completion. So if they're not all responded to, we will send out saying, please respond to whatever we need to get it finished off. So that's, um, but if everything's there, then we're good. And um, on your score sheets, I think, and Georgina, if I'm wrong, please tell me, but I think she's, yeah. At the, it usually checks off what recognition, if there's a recognition being awarded, it's on there at the bottom of the score sheet. So um, take note of those because those are presented at NAFTA Summer Conference. So, you know, if you have teachers getting recognition, then send them up, let them get, let them get celebrated, okay? Um, so evidence. Like I said, all the evidence should be provided in the self-assessment form that we provided to you. It's preferred that this PDF is used for all submissions. And the reason for that is we've got it set up so that the PDFs can transfer into other forms. They can get exported into other forms. And when we're, when we're using multiple different kinds of um, resources, Google Docs, Word, et cetera, then it makes it more difficult to do that. So we ask that you, however you do it to put it together is fine, but your final document to us, we ask that it's on that form. Um, you can, like I said, you can use those self-assessments that you did as part of the annual report to start it. And I think that that's a great idea because you've already kind of looked at what your program is, where you think it would score. Hopefully you made some notes about why you think that, and now you can just, all you have to do is add that last piece of evidence. If you want new copies of those forms, they're located on our CTU website. It's under program resources and QPR is like right in the middle of the second page and it has all of the different forms that annual report, teacher, um, counselor, and admin. And that looks like this. So that's what you're looking for. And these are all there. Um, this is what one of the, this is just one of the indicators. So on the self-assessment, this is what it looks like. So as part of your self-assessment at the end of June, you should have filled this out. You should have marked what you think your program is. You should have maybe put a couple notes in here. And then um, this is where the last part you need to do is insert your link. Like I said, it can be text. Doesn't have to be a live link. So, um, that can be right here. So the only thing I will tell you is to please remember to make sure that it's shareable because um, that usually is the case where we have issues is people forget to check that and then we have to send it back because you know we can't open it. So if we can't open it, we can't review it. So here's just some be best practices. This is our advice, keep it simple. It's um, it really is just one piece of evidence per indicator. I think there's one indicator that I asked for two because we're asking for a copy of your class expectations. But if you have put the um, it's under curriculum. So if you have put what curriculum you're using and it's an approved curriculum, you know, uh, CTE approved curriculum, then you only need one. But if you haven't, then you have to put a second one in for that. So that's the only one where you might have to do two, but everything else is one. Make sure that you have the appropriate sharing properties, which I talked about. And then a couple of things, like if you're asking us, if you wanna use part of your school catalog as your evidence, please go to that page, screenshot it, snip it, whatever you wanna do, make it a little picture and use that as your evidence. Because honestly, we are not gonna go in and search the catalog for whatever evidence it should be, right? Like we need you to tell us what the evidence is that you're presenting, not the whole catalog. So um, I will ask you to do that. But in exchange, you don't have to turn any evidence in for 9.3 through 9.10. That's all the data. We're doing that for you. You don't have to do anything there. We'll share the information with you during the interview, um, but we collect that through our, our data department. And use your resources. So we have the Canvas class. Funny story right now, we've got six people that have finished it. 
one is a CT person and the other five are elementary teachers. So I don't know why the elementary teachers are taking the CT class, but they're getting four hours of credit for finishing it for some silly reason trying to get that fixed. So um, I hope that you guys, you can get four credits if you do the whole thing. If you wanna use it just as guidance for different um, specific indicators that you're not sure of what a good example would be, then you can do that too. But I was trying to find a way to give you guys some, you know, continuing or professional learning credits for the work that you have to do. So we put that together. And so if you do that, you get four hours. And then read the rubric and provide evidence that responds to the rubric. So there are examples of evidence um, because I, I know that people want examples. But please, before you use an example, make sure it answers the rubric in the way you want it to, okay? Because you can say um, that, like the catalog answers something, but if you didn't give me the specific page, it may not be answering the rubric the way you think it does. So just, I always tell people to not only read the standard, but read the rubric and then look at the, and then look, you know, then decide on your evidence. That's the best way to explain it, I hope. Um, so this is the Canvas class. This is what it looks like. It's in the ND catalog listing on Canvas. So that's the link to the to the catalog. So um, like I said, these will be sent out to you and they are they'll be live links. But it's green. It looks like that. Uh, don't do the 2122. I think that one's been closed, but this one this is the one you want. And then this would be an example of um, a section from the Canvas class. So evidence for 2.1, and this is a picture of what, like how you could show evidence. This would be a data question. So um, this is in there for every single indicator at, for teachers. Every, we haven't done one for admin and counselors yet, sorry. Um, but we do have one for teachers. So every single indicator that you have, there's a section on it. It does the explanation. Um, it'll give you ideas and it will give you, you know, pictures of examples. 2.1 is the section on equity and access. And this was always a struggle for me when I did them the first five years because um, I don't think that people understood what we were really looking for. So we added some additional examples because when you look at equity and access, it's about data, right? So the data would be a comparison between the program and maybe the school, uh, kind of seeing how it mirrors the different subpopulations in your school, how your program mirrors that. So that's one way of showing it. But it's also showing how you um, do your teaching as well. So if you have activities and lessons that support culturally responsible, le responsive learning, culture um, processes, learning processes, or examples of student-centered learning activities, those could be used as well, you know, or instead of the data, because remember, we only need one. So, um, so we did add that to try to get it to be more about equity and access. So that'll be a little bit new this year. I wanted to show you, we do have some, so finding that data has always been a struggle. There is a, there is a report in Infinite Campus, but I've only seen people use it a very few times. But we have our interactive program directory, and this link will be live as well. But I want to show you this because, number one, it's just cool. And <laughs> number two, it's um, it has a lot of information. And Chrissy, you'll be surprised that it's working now. Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> Wait a minute. I have to go to a different browser because for some reason, this browser it's not working for me. This one is. Okay. So when you go here, looks like we're going to our, again, the um, resources page, and it's the interactive program directory. So if you've not seen this before, we have a program directory that you may have seen that has everybody listed, but now this one's interactive. So it has other data as well, and stuff's being added to it all the time. Gabriel's been doing a lot of work on this. But if you go to, so I'm using Elko as an example because they don't have QPR this year. 
Um, is Jen still here? Chrissy, can you add the, or who the one you guys add that to the chat? Um, Elko High School, and then it lists, if you see that, lists all their programs, right? And this tells you the number of students in 21-22 that, that are um, in these programs right now at the school, okay? But if you also like pick one, so I'll pick Ag Mechanics, then you can go up to these three bars here and you can view unduplicated data. So this tells us um, all of the different unduplicated demographics and populations in that in that program. It also shows you the non-traditional breakdown of the program. So if you wanted to go, I don't remember the standard. No oh, 2.1. Thanks, Dana. 2.1. Um, this is also helpful for other things, but you know, this is um, for 2.1. Then you can compare this. You can also just do it by Elco and pull up the same thing. And there's your comparison, right? Like you can show that comparison between the school and the program. So, um, so I think that's helpful. I always like that. Let me see if I can get back to my PowerPoint. Mouse, find me. No, oh, it went start at the beginning. Sorry. Here we go. So that's kind of what I was showing here. Um, so two point one can be a data question, but it can also be, you know, lesson plans of different kinds of activities that you do to incorporate that cultural response of learning. Um, so that's the website. Like I said, those will be live in your power, in your PDF. This is the one standard that you can use that you know you probably will have to use two items because it's asking for CT course curriculum is aligned, and then also is asking for your course expectation include the program description. So if you show your course expectations. And if they already say what curriculum you're using, that covers both. But if it doesn't say what you are, then either a lesson plan that if you're not using a um, approved instructional material, then you may want to just do a lesson plan that makes sure it shows your standards. Um, we're just looking for we're looking for ways that it can be shown that you're teaching the standards for the program. So um, either the either the approved instruction materials or uh, lesson plan that shows that. Okay. So those are the only couple that I kind of talked about evidence specific wise, um, because the canvas has examples for every single indicator. So those are all available to you. Um, when you submit the evidence, Remember to do the administrators, the counselors, and each of the programs, one for each program. Um, the self-assessments with the links that are uh, shareable. And then uh, you can either do it in one email. If you don't have a lot of, pro if you have, you know, six or eight programs, you can probably put it in one email without it being too huge. But if you get up into the, you know, some of the people have 16, 17 or more. I would suggest doing a shared uh, folder. And we have the CTE NV docs at Gmail account, and that's what that you can share it to that folder. You can also email it to that folder. So I would encourage you to send me a note saying, hey, I uploaded my stuff because we don't check that email on a on a super regular basis. So we check it more often during, during QPR season, but um, if you send, tell me you're sending it, it'll be checked right away so we can get working on your materials. Okay, and then the last thing is just a few little reminders. Um, no PII, so that personal identifying information. Um, if we get it, we have to delete it. So I, I don't see a need for it at any time. I mean, we ask about um, like classroom sizes, but you can take a, a infinite campus picture of your roster, just the top part, right? And it says how many students. How many male, how many female without having any names? So you don't have to have the PII on there. If you're using something for CTSOs like a sign-in sheet, 
then just maybe do the dates and kind of black out the names so that you know we can see how many students were there, but we don't necessarily have to have their names. All right, so um, so please don't send us that. We'd rather not have it. If you feel like you have to send it to us, you need to get with your district and send it through Bighorn because that's protected. Um, the evidence is due October 15th. That's a pretty hard deadline. I think that's actually a Saturday. So I'm probably going to give you until Monday, the 17th, but, um, or the, yeah, the 17th. So, but that, that weekend, that 10, 15 area is the deadline. So if you are struggling with getting evidence ready and um, you're thinking that you might not make that deadline, please reach out to us sooner rather than later, because maybe we can help you with some guidance or some advice to um, to make it not be as, you know, we can get it done sooner, okay? So um, we're happy to provide technical assistance to any school or district that wants it, just reach out. If you wanna have your teachers at a meeting and you want us to Zoom in, um, hold a virtual meeting, you know, please, if you're up in Washoe, and you want Chrissy to stop by, if you're down in Vegas, you want me or me or one of the other um, team members to stop by, just reach out. That's what we do. We love providing technical assistance. I'm pretty sure that's the favorite part of all of our jobs. So um, so please don't, don't be afraid to reach out. You can also reach out to your district people. Kim is a great resource in Clark. Um, Lisa up, uh, up in uh, Humboldt and I have had a lot of conversations recently. So, um, so just reach out to the people there. And if you still need help, reach out to us, reach out to us first, I don't care. It's just, um, we, we would, I know I would rather that you reach out to us and let us answer a quick question, than you struggle and struggle and struggle and get frustrated and, you know, waste a lot of your own time. I would rather you just ask the question. So um, that's our philosophy. And so now we'll open it up to any questions. And I've lost where my picture of all you guys are. There it is. So, <clears throat> questions, comments, what do you got? Anything you want to see again? Mercy. Hi, Denise. Hi, everyone. Hmm. It's nice to see faces too, Denise. <laughs> yes. Um, okay, so I'm going to tell you the same way I, I told Kim uh, Delamas when I spoke to her. Um, last year. I'm a newbie, so I will definitely need some guidance here. Um, are we just talking about for the October 15, we're just talking about the self-assessment that the teachers did, right? And then with, the, with, with, with their evidence. With their evidence. Okay. 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 So they're, they've already done their self-assessment, so they should hopefully still have that and pull that up and then start adding links to the evidence. So you know, if they have to, if they have hard copy stuff, take a picture, scan it, whatever, make it a, make it a shareable document or PDF or whatever, and then link it into those files, into that um, PDF. Okay. Perfect. Um, the other question that I have is, um, you mentioned something about that teacher recognition. Um, to oh, send, yeah. um, send in. Who do we send it to, or is there a form that we need to fill out, or do we just send an email? You mean, what do you mean, the recognition for their for the QPR? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. So that's earned through the QPR process. Oh, okay. So um, I didn't put that in there, and I should have. But um, if you look, let me see if I can get this up here. Um, So if we go to one of the self-assessments, here we go. I always go to the teacher one because it has the most stuff. Um, there are seven triggers that we call triggers. They're marked in green, okay? So the triggers are the ones that we they have to meet, meets or, or exceeds, all right? So in order to get a recognition, you have to get a certain percentage of your score and you have to meet or exceed all seven of the triggers. OK, so the way we change the scoring up a little bit, um, it used to be based on a number. And um, 
but what happens is when people had uh, a NA, like, you know, not applicable, they were actually losing points. Like it was better for them to be needs improvement than to be NA. So as a former math teacher, I had a problem with that. So, <laughs> so we changed it so that the it's a percentage and the NAs don't count. Like that number comes out. So Georgina, do you remember the percentages? I wanna say 60 and 70, but it might've been 70 and 80, I don't remember. No, I think 60 and 70 or 60 maybe. 60 and 70, yeah. okay. Okay, so it's a, it's a percentage. It actually worked out to be the same numbers. It used to be 150 and 180. And so when you look at the percentages, it's pretty much the same numbers, but it's just the NAs don't count against them anymore. So what happens is you get your, um, your score sheets for each program. They'll be attached to your summary report. The very bottom is the overall score. And right down there, it says recognition awarded or NA, and it's either awarded or not. Um, and that's where you'll get the notices of what the awards were. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much for clarifying that. Absolutely. But we do give them all out, like the, the distinguished get plaques, the, um, what is it, excellence gets a certificate. And um, we, last year we didn't have very many. It was a bad year because of the COVID got us last year. Um, so, so we want to have a big number again this year. I want to have more time needed for my award ceremony. So I hope that that'll be the case. All right, Canyon Springs, what do you got? Hey, I just want to ask a question. So uh, like the previous speaker, I'm new to this. Yep. So is there anybody that can like hold our hands and walk through a couple of these so we know what we're actually doing? Um, do I reach out? To, who do I reach out for that? You can reach out to Kim DeLima. She can help you. You can invite me to a meeting and I will help you. Okay. Um, you can have your teachers do the Canvas class. That will help them okay. because then you'll see what those indicators are and what kind of evidence you need. Okay, so we we haven't had, um, we, we didn't see the information that needed to be prepared for June. And so I'm, I'm trying to understand, we just need to have by the 15th of October evidence um, that are uh, about our program. Is that correct? Yes, so, well, you need to have filled out this self-assessment. That's what you should have done for June. Yeah. I know your school turned in an annual report, so maybe they put in it what they wanted, but each program should fill this out, okay? Yeah. Um, they should make some notes. So the process should be read this, read the, read the rubric, look at the examples, make a note of how you think you score. So if you think that in this one, Instructional methods, it says using a variety of instructional methods, including learning outcomes, et cetera. So then you look at this and a highly effective is the students' individual learning styles influence the various instructional methods. So if you have a piece of evidence that can show that you're incorporating students' individual learning styles, you would link that into this last box. Okay, and that if, could be either a picture or a, a document, is that yep. true? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So some of the examples are um, a screenshot of a, some kind of digital thing you're doing, a lesson plan that shows different instructional strategies for different learning styles, okay. um, ex examples of student work without PII, <laughs> curriculum examples, and, or a syllabus that explains your instructional materials. Those are just examples, but those are, it uh, gives you a guideline. Okay. All okay. right. So you have to do that for each one of the indicators. Your principal will have to do that for the, or the admin team has to do that for their section and the counselors have to do that for their section. And if, and I, this, if I understand this right, um, <coughs> who's responsible to get this report back to you? I, as a teacher, do my part and turn it over to my administrator. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. I, I don't want to be the big cheese <laughs> to make sure I get the documents back. Um, yeah, there's a there's a CT representative at your school that should that yeah. has been uh, delineated. Yeah, Mr. Okay. Smith here in the classroom. Uh, Miss McGee and Mr. Smith are both here, and he has a question also. Okay. So about uh, two weeks before school started, 
they changed several of my classes. They told me that the state said that uh, like landscaping one and horticulture is no longer there. And so I had to pick or somebody picked a bunch of classes for me. I have a lot of those classes. I'm I just meet the safety standard and a few other things. I don't have a greenhouse. And I, I don't know what to, to do about those standards. So Christina Carey, who's on the call here, um, can connect with you, Danny, and you guys can talk about how the best way is to handle that situation. I okay. literally just I literally just sent you an email right now, <laughs> just right before you started speaking. And really, um, for clarity, the only class that should have changed for you this year is your first year class, and it's called Principles of Agriculture, Food and Natural Resources. All of the rest of your program should not have changed at this point. So we should definitely talk. Yeah, OK, sounds okay. good. All right. Any other questions? You guys are letting us off too easy. So I want to say again, this is non-punitive. I can never say that enough. I don't want people stressing for, you know, over this. I know that you want to do great. And I know that, um, no, that I also know that nobody's perfect, right? So what you really want to do is share where you are, because if we know exactly where you are, then we can help it grow and improve. If you just go in and make up pretty stuff and spend a whole bunch of time doing that, then we really don't have a true picture. And what we really want is a true picture. That's why it's non-punitive. And so, um, there's a lot of changes going on, just like with Danny's program, like they're going from three to two years and there's a lot of, you know, things you have to adjust to. And we totally understand that. So, um, you know, that's all being taken into account as well. So just like I said, reach out, um, put in what you have. And honestly, if you don't have anything, then don't put it in there, because what's going to happen is we're going to note it as no evidence. We're going to mention it like at the meeting and then we're going to have our interview and we focus on the areas where either there's um, evidence that doesn't really meet the standard or no evidence and we're going to talk to you about it and a lot of times we come up we both together come up with oh you know that we'll talk about well do you ever do this do you ever do that and the teachers will be like oh yeah i do that all the time great Put that in there, you're good, right? So sometimes it's just that you haven't thought of what can show what you're trying to show. And we've done this, we 25 schools a year. So, so we we can ask those questions that can bring that out for you. So, um, and then you still have, either you can show it during the interview that's, um, that's recorded, or you can add it to your uh, evidence two week, within two weeks after the interview. So you have time to keep adding stuff, okay? So I don't want you to think that you have to put in stuff in October if you don't really have it. Like if you have it, awesome, we wanna see it. But if it's like with, the, with Danny where he's in a new program and maybe he doesn't have that stuff yet, like CTSOs, maybe in October he hasn't started anything with the CTSO. But by the time we do our interview, oh yeah, we did our CTSO. Great, where's your evidence? So, so just understand that it's a process and we're looking at kind of little snapshots in time. So we just want to, you can put in evidence up to for one year previous. Okay, so professional development. So from October 15th of this year through October 15th of last year, anything with those dates count, okay? Um, so, but if you've been doing something after the fact, after we've collected the evidence, we'll certainly talk about that in the interviews and you still get credit for stuff. So we give a lot of chances to make it, to, to make your program show as well as we possibly can, all right? 
I just don't like it when people are stressed. <laughs> so, who do knows? Because I did Hoodoo's QPR, and she would say that to me all the time. I would say, just relax. It's going to be okay. So, <laughs> oh, uh, yes, absolutely, guys. Before joining the NDE, I was, uh, you know, over at a charter school, and Denise and her team came. We were <laughs> freaking out. We thought we had done something wrong. <laughs> there was a joke going around that, oh, some parent must have complained. And um, but nothing. And our teachers ended up like the interview process was just um, so amazing. They were so comfortable with Denise and the whole team. Um, towards the end, Denise was even making recommendations of <laughs> providing the wish list to our principal saying this is what's needed <laughs> in the classroom. <laughs> so um, it was it was it went really well and nothing to nothing to stress about at all. And one more thing, we learned so much. My gosh. And Marina was there and she helped with the MOA process. So we were doing going through two reviews. Um, we b built it from ground up, the whole MOA. And so this really is uh, something that's going to help you. And when they say technical assistance and, and that they're there to help them, and they truly mean that. So nothing to stress about at all. So what other questions do you have? Anything is on the table.